Welcome back. This is Crash Course number 16. I'm Sammy Chimona Hihi Aliyubi from the Eagle One Development Team. And uh, we're going to go ahead today and we're going to start off with some basics about how we're going to create some terrain. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to actually delete this wall. And we're going to expand out into a little courtyard here. Uh, we're going to begin by going over to our geometry type and switching over to quads. Let's change the grid size to about 128 for right now. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to make a uh, 512 by 512 quad. Okay, now, uh, with this quad, we're going to come over here uh, to where it says uh, quad slice in the face selection tool. Let's add a couple of slices to this. So uh, divide it into fours, nice and easy. Now we've got uh, squares that are 128 by 128. Okay, now, uh, what's going to be useful for this is uh, how we're going to go ahead and uh, by dividing this up into a checkerboard uh, take advantage of it uh, but let's go ahead and reposition this so that it matches up with our courtyard for right now we'll expand this out uh let's see here let's go ahead and, and, and let's open it up and then if i want to make sure that i uh grab this vertice and pull it and grab this one and pull it Sorry, actually, let's go. Let's join the two of these together. I'm merging these two, and then let's go ahead and pull this out with the vertice. All right. Okay, uh, well, our 128 by 128 grid is going to be really, really useful. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, and coming down here where it says subdivision. We can go ahead, let's start here. If I click level zero subdivision, it's not going to have anything added to it, okay? One, we've seen this before with the blended textures. Uh, let's go up to level two for right now. So that way we can go ahead and work with something but not have it be overtaxing. Now, <clears throat> uh, with this subdivided, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, do the following. I want to double click the perimeter and uh, we're just going to give it a lip for right now. And this, this lip is going to allow us holding shift i'm going to press up uh, and i'm going to hold down alt shift and double click these sides let's put them at level zero subdivision and this is going to allow us to keep these edges down on the ground and not have these edges go up in the air come a little bit crazier for later um, <clears throat> i'm going to press three go to shift d uh, shift D is going to bring us to our displacement tool displacement tool is found right down here and uh, with my F8 key, I can go ahead and turn on the wireframe mode. It makes it a lot easier for us to see what exactly is going on. Uh, so uh, with wireframe mode enabled, I can see up here I've got all these different tools that I can use to displace the terrain. Here, we'll go over this first one real quick. I can uh, push and pull. Just hold down left click, and it will start to pull the terrain up. And if I wanted to do the opposite at any time, just hold down control, okay, and you'll see that it's based on here the radius, the strength, and smooth amount has something to do with another option over here. But radius and strength, that's going to determine how strong we pull, or how big that circle is. And I, I usually like to work in, around 50 to 64 for the smaller parts. It really is going to depend on uh, how big <clears throat> of a geometry you are trying to displace. But for right now, uh, this is going to go ahead and work out. A uh, couple of more things I can do. I can flatten it. So uh, whatever point I start holding down the mouse button to, it's going to bring everything else up to that point. Uh, I can start to move these subdivisions around. Uh, I can use the inflate button. This kind of makes it nice to, to build these uh, giant mountain ranges. Uh, this is clay mode. Okay? It's kind of like a, a little bit like a flatten, but it's going to pull it up. Uh, we have here pinching, okay, where you can pull together the vertices i'm gonna undo those because pinching really really starts to bring about uh, some really interesting parts uh, erase it'll start to flatten it bring it back down to its original position uh, the erase tool <clears throat> is something that uh, is going to be removing all of these crazy peaks and valleys and starting to make it look a little bit more normal i like to use the smooth function a lot though this smooth i'm going to change it to about 20. Okay, anytime that i have displacement that i want to go ahead and try to to even out smooth does a great job you see these random peaks and valleys that i have that are really sharp and it'll, it'll try its best to even it out so you don't have something that looks uh looks like it sticks out in nature so here i'm going to go ahead i'm going to smooth all of this and don't worry we'll add a, 
a little bit of uh, terrain textures and blended materials, and I'll show you that in another tutorial. Uh, but for displacements and getting started, it's really important to understand that we've put this down here and we don't want to overcomplicate it. Okay, I, I don't want to start to increase the amount of subdivisions so that it's a crazy level. Okay, level two, level one is perfect for the majority of what you need to do. If I need to get down to level three, Okay, uh, very rarely will I go to level three. I might do to the entrance uh, some caves that we've shown a little bit, uh, but try to stick to level two if possible. <clears throat> level one if it's far away and level three if it's super up close and you need to have that sort of detail. All right, this is the basics of terrain displacement and manipulation. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick introduction. Our next few tutorials are gonna go much more in depth as we start to manipulate this terrain and shape it the way that we want. All right, I hope you guys had a great uh, introduction into this. We'll see you guys next time.